The Ondo State chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has expressed dissatisfaction over the recent appointment of Babajide, the son of the state governor, Rotimiya Kiridulu, as the director general of the State Performance and Project Implementation Monitoring Unit. The appointment of Babajide was announced via, uh, via I beg your pardon, a statement issued by the State Commissioner uh, for Information and Orientation, Donald Ojogo. Uh, the PDP, in a statement signed by the People's Democratic Party's uh, Publicity Secretary, Kennedy Perete, uh, said the action of the governor amounted to the abuse of office. They also went ahead to allege that the appointment was part of a grand design to finally empty the coffers of the state before Governor Kiridulu returns to Ibadan. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ademola Adewale. He's a political journal, uh, analyst. Thank you very much, Mr. Ademola, for joining us. My player. Let's start with the claims of the People's Democratic Party. It's not just the PDP that's on this table. Uh, there are several other people, even leaders of thought, who have criticized this move by the state government. But then the governor has come out to justify his son's appointment. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you very much. You see, without sounding partisan here, because I wouldn't want us to come in on the platforms of either being an APC person or a PDP person. But this is simple morality. Do you understand? Now, for a sitting governor in a crime like ours that chooses to appoint no one other than his own biological son in the same regime he leads as the governor, is a moral anomaly. Irrespective of my support for the party, APC, the latest defense by the party for the fact that the guy, the Atendo Luton, has been a supporter, has been this, has been that, it is a charm upon the entirety of the Ondo state people. Because, if I may say something factually, the concept of accounting teaches independence how do you seek to be accountable as a governor if your own biological son is an appointee in your regime? As an auditor in the bank, as an internal controller, or, okay, let me go off that. You know, in the bank, our employment about couples working in the same organization because of the shared interest. So for a governor to nominate his son and eventually swear him in is an abuse of office. It is an act of immorality. And it has gone to show to the entire world that the man does not have any sound choice in the human resource component of the entire state. I was about to ask the Are question. You, you, you just played into my next question because I was going to ask that how does this make the people of Ondo look? Is it that, is it, is the government of Ondo State, including the governor, saying that there are no capable or um, people who are educated enough to hold that office other than the son of the governor? Let me say something clearer. I am from Owo, the same constituency of the governor. But I can tell you categorically, the whole of our kingdom will never, by any death of assurance, in support of this child. This is a fraud. It's an HR fraud on the entirety of Ondo State. How dare you, a sitting governor, get out of the all of the millions of people that make up Ondo State to go again and pick your own son to occupy a position as important as the general? So that means there's nobody else in Ondo State again. It is a sham, it's a charade, it's a stratagem, it's a fraud to loot the whole of that state. I say it and I'm repeating it. And I can call anybody to question, by the time the regime is over, on those states will be within and money. But does this, not also, does this not also play down on the credibility of the All Progressive Congress in that state? Because... It's just the PDP Corey, who is also, who is the opposition that's speaking up on this issue. We know that a few leaders have murmured and grumbled on this particular one, but we've not really seen any person within the APC speak up against this issue. Does this also mean that the All Progressive Congress in Ondo State 
has no bone of in, uh, sincerity in them to speak up on this issue you of nepotism, or does it mean that they does it mean that they're okay with it? Hello. Go ahead. You have not said anything aside the two. What we have just advised is the two positions. What you have as the remnant of APC that is dead and done over this issue in moral sensibility is an affirmation of the fact that the party is dead in you know, those days. Because for a party to come out and tell us that the governor's son was nominated not because he is the son of the governor, but because of his uh, contribution. What contribution has he that some people else did not make in getting him back to office? Who was he? How many of us knew Baba Gide in Ondo State as a contributor to the re-election or even the initial election of his father? And even if he had done more than Jerry than uh, Moses, the election of his biological father is an over-sufficient compensation for the entire family of the Akedonu. Mm -hmm. So now bringing Akedonu son back, and also, you know the wife is occupying a very strategic position in the church, and now bringing up his son is a charade on Ondo State. And I can tell you our people are not proud of Akedonu over this issue. Like but I said, as a professional accountant okay. and an internal controller, Accountability has been reduced to nothing. Emotional insensibility of the governor is at work and is at play. Because if he is emotionally sensible, he will know that this is an act of charm against the will of the people. Finally, before I let you go, because our time is almost up. Um there's something that um, the, the government, um, while responding or trying to justify this act, said, and I'd like to quote them directly. Um, the, they said, and I quote, This administration has been engaging members of the young generation on whose tender shoulders the future of this great country rests. We will continue to engage worthy youth regardless of the degree of aff or affinity or otherwise. Uh, only the fit and the proper will join us. So maybe the governor's son does fit into this fit and proper. Uh, and I'm wondering, what should the young people of Ondo be doing at this moment? Because as we speak, he's been sworn in alongside other people. Uh, but will the people who are young in that state, who, on whose um, names or rather on whose behest the government is saying that they put this young man into office for, will they sit quietly and let this continue? My dear, what has happened and the position of those that you have quoted is an affirmation of the HR fraud and administrative recklessness of that state, of that state government. I'm putting together Akei Dolu and the whole of the executive cabinet of the government and then the party APC. Because, see, I did 15 years in the bank as an internal controller. I can tell you that there, is no, there are no more than one million of my type even in age, that will do better. What has Babajide done? And like I said, if morally Akei Dolu is sensible and sensitive, he will know that posterity will forever be against him for his recklessness. So they okay. have not done anything, and they have nothing whatsoever to project in okay. the face of posterity for this act that they have done. Nobody in the youth caucus of Ondo State is in support of this charity. It is an administrative fraud. And okay. it is a trap again. So look, I said, so look and relook on those state back to Ibadan by Akeli Dolu. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much. Ademola, uh, Adewale Ademola is a political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking on this issue. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for staying with us on Plus Politics tonight. Well, we will leave you with what Nigerians have to say about the president's ability to solve insecurity in the country. I'll see you tomorrow. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening. The case of insecurity is not something that can just be handled at once like that. It's a complicated matter. And it's obvious that the president is making some efforts and it is not something that can just be done at once. So let, let us be, believe that some of the efforts that have been made uh, will yield fruit. But it's obvious that uh, efforts have been made. 
So it's just left to different agencies to ensure that uh, they, they, uh, they, they heart to what they are doing uh, because it's becoming uh, more complicated almost every day. I don't think so. Why? The reason being this because this is not the, the beginning and it's not the uh, this thing, has not, this thing has not started today. Okay. It has been starting for a very long time. We should be clamoring on them too. Up to now, they've not been able to do anything. So I don't think it's government um, issues, but it's only God intervention that can really help us out in this case. Well, uh, with the look of things, I'm, I'm not sure the government is ready or the go uh, president because uh, I expect them to have put a lot of uh, measures in place at the moment to solve insecurity and possibly to put people's mind at rest because uh, people are agitated, you know. We want to do Christmas and New Year with peace of mind, with our family, you understand? But many people don't want to travel. Like me, for, for example, I just want to stay in one place. Of course, I think he's, he's, been, he's doing his best. I mean, what can one do? You have your security operatives. They are the people that will uh, have to go and uh, confront uh, whosoever is creating problems. The, the president needs to give his support, provide whatever they need. I think that's, uh, I think he's, he's trying his best. It, it's like the president is just like ignoring the insecurity in Nigeria because every day you hear new, new news like in different states of something, something happening. So I don't think the president is ready to really tackle the issue yet as of now. So it's more like it's something that the government is just ignoring. And we self in this in this place we are kind of in like Lagos, that's what I mean. We are kind of uh, shut down, shut off from the news. Like we don't even know much of what is going. But when you really take a look at other people that are in other states, like far states like Shokoto, Joss and all, then you get to see the reality of things that are going on in Nigeria and it's not it's not a good thing.